Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am doing a slimes uh, tricks and tips, kind of like if you run your own slime shop and you have social media and you just want to make your slimes look good and you want a good setup and things like that. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe down below if you want to see more videos like this and more reviews. Um, and turn on that notification bell and of course let me know down below what you guys would like to see next and without further ado let's get into the video before we get started really quickly I just want to mention please like be nice with my nails like I, please don't judge them I completely slept in today I don't even know what's wrong with me I, I slept over 12 hours and I'm really trying to get some filming done so when I did my nails I was kind of doing them in a really like fast paced time so I just wanted to mention that so this next part does look a little weird this is kind of what my setup looks like if you guys have ever wanted to know this is the table that I film on here is the little stand that I have my phone on um I am having a camera shipped to me um and a better stand and everything but because I'm going to switch over to that, so you guys are going to be seeing some changes soon, but I don't plan on changing the lights. These are soft box lights. I definitely recommend them. I have two of them. Um, it just gives off a really nice soft lighting, especially when you can't have natural light. Um, but I do, of course, prefer natural light, but I don't have, like, a good spot. Um, I film in my boyfriend's apartment, and he only has two different windows that I could actually use, and they both don't have good lighting. So, I'm kind of stuck with this. I hopefully, um, once we move into a house, I hopefully will change that, and I'll be able to use some natural lighting when I film. Um, so that's the first part, and then of course when I film I always have activator on hand. So this is just kind of what my setup looks like. Of course you could do it any way you want, um, and of course I evolved over time. I never, like, I haven't always had this, um, table, I haven't always had the lights, and I always, haven't always had this stand here. I've had different stands, different lights, different tables. So, you know, when you first start out you probably wouldn't look like this, but this is a good setup to get to, obviously. The second tip I want to give you guys, I'm just going to go over really, really quickly because I can't really show you anything, so there's nothing really to show. But the second one is to follow trends. So basically, when you follow a trend, your views on either Instagram or YouTube or whatever um, platform you use is going to get a lot more views than if you just do anything. So if you guys remember, there was a clay cracking um like thing that people started doing and if you did clay cracking more than likely you got a lot of views um just a few weeks ago I put up a um Nicole Jacklin review that's because I mean not only did I want to do it but I saw a trend that people had started doing it started talking about her she had a lot of tea on her at the time so you know the best time to make a video about her was then um so just by doing that you know of course on YouTube you'll get a lot more views a lot more likes more comments everything like that, and on Instagram, you're just going to get more um, clout, I should say. So I just wanted to mention that, and I'm not sure why the heck I'm not focusing. So tips number three and four kind of correlate with each other, and they are to predetermine what you want to film and film in bulk. So by predetermining what you want to do, you'll have all your slimes laid out. Um, I'm filming three different videos today, so this is why all these slimes are here. Um, and then by filming in bulk, you're just getting more done at the same time, so you don't have to keep resetting up your area and things like that. Now, when I do move into the house that we hopefully get by the end of the year, um, I will probably have my setup, like, always up, but, um, until then, it is kind of a hassle to get started. You know, I have to make sure that, you know, the air conditioning isn't going, the fan isn't going, I have to get the lights going, um... And it's just kind of a hassle. So by doing it all in bulk, I can already predetermine what I'm going to do. You know, what, you know, I have a planner of what I'm going to put up on YouTube so that I know what to film that week. Um, so basically just to say, I film probably just about four or five videos a week, but I only post two of them. Um, and then I'll, of course, maybe sometimes do like random videos just in case like I'm sick or I can't film or things like that. So I have extra to do. And the same goes with Instagram. Usually I'll film about 50 videos in advance just so that the only thing I have to do is upload them. And that just makes everything a whole lot easier. Tip number five is to have variety in your videos. So not everyone wants to see just all pokes, all swirls and things like that. Like that's really going to get 
old and you just you know nobody really wants to see the same thing over and over again just like how nobody wants to see the same movie over and over again nobody wants to see the same thumbnail on youtube nobody wants to see you know a reviewer review the same shop over and over again that's the only thing they do you know nobody wants to hear the same song it's all kind of kind of correlates together like that so instead of just poking a slime all the time and that's it or just swirling or just you know stretching it you know, put some more variety, do pokes and do stretches and do swirls, you know, because, you know, you want variety, but do them all in good moderation. And that kind of comes with, you know, picking the right slime to show off different things. So with thick slimes, of course, you're going to poke them more often than you're going to like stretch them. But with crunchy slimes, you're going to do a lot of swirls and a lot of crunches. Um, and with inflatable slimes, you're going to do a lot of pulling. It just depends on the slime you have. But good moderation is always something to keep in mind. The next three are kind of under the same um, category, which I call appeal. Um, and that basically means that you're going to make your slimes look good and you're going to make them look like, you know, something that people are going to want. So I'm, I personally am not stocked right now, so I'm not going to use my own slimes. I'm going to use other people's slimes. Um, so I just wanted to explain that. And some of these are kind of like inside tips and tricks that I know other um, slimers have used on Instagram and on YouTube to make their slimes look better um, and things like that. Now, I'm not, you know, certain everyone does this, but it might look a little like um, just you might have seen it before, basically. Um, so with number six, that would be activating your hands. Now, this is going to come in um, handy when you want to show off a slime that maybe might stick to you, like a clear slime. If you activate your hands beforehand, the clear slime, I would say 99% of the time will not stick to your hands and it's going to make that slime look a lot better because clear slimes have that problem where they'll stick to your hands. So by activating your hands, you know, you'll make underactivated slimes look good, you'll make clear slimes look good, and you'll be able to like fold slimes in your hands a lot better, kind of like what Slime Obsidian does. Um, I'm not sure if he, you know, activates his hands. I I don't know. This is just what I've seen and what seems to work. I try not to do that because that's kind of like falsifying your products, but you know, it just does make it look better. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here I have a semi underactivated slime, but let's say I just want to film this because um, this is, I guess, the texture. Let's say this isn't underactivated. How about that? And, um, I want to show people that it can be a holdable slime, but it's not a holdable slime. As you could see, it's sticking to me. So I'm going to solve that by activating my hands. So here's my activator. Put it on my hands. Now, especially when you activate your hands, don't do what I did and get it all over the um, table. But you're really not going to see, you know, the activation on my hands. They look pretty normal. But when I pick this slime up, I'm able to hold it no problem while still maintaining the same texture, the same glossiness, and I don't have to overactivate it, so I can still stretch it and pull it without it looking like it's underactivated or that it's more of a table slime. Number seven would be to stretch and puff your slimes correctly. And basically what I mean is, you know, nobody just wants to see you do this. You know, but you definitely want to show off that stretch and when you puff it. So the rule of thumb when you're puffing things would be to kind of stretch it for, I think, just about five minutes. And that should be its um, like max stretchiness. You can usually tell when it starts to rip super easily. It's not that it's overactivated. It's just filled with a bunch of bubbles. And then when you're stretching it, I personally think that doing more of a flat thumbed technique look makes just the slime look a little bit better you can see more of the slime and I think it puffs it up just a little bit better than just doing this and of course nobody wants to see you puff the slime forever so just do a few pulls and then pause it you know pull some more and then show off that puff at the end you don't want to have to sit there for five minutes and just watch somebody pull a slime 
that pull technique is also very um, nice to use when you have slimes like this. Now, I don't have like any other slimes besides this one that kind of is like this, but when you have like a semi floam or just a, um, a slime that doesn't have like a lot of things in it, but like a good amount of things, pulling like this usually just makes the bubble pop sound better and you can see everything that's in the slime rather than just pulling like this. It just makes it look a little bit better and um, since I can't show it off very well, I would recommend going to see Blushing Baby Slimes. That's a hair. <laughs> um, because she really knows how to make slimes look good. She's really good with these appeal things. So if you want to see more about it, I definitely recommend checking her account out. Um, because she just makes things look amazing. The last part of the appeal, which is tip number eight, is to both underactivate and overactivate slimes. Now, of course, it's up to you to choose what you want, but depending on the slime, that's what's going to make it look better. So, like with the one that I had that was underactivated, of course, um, if you've ever noticed, underactivated pokes sound a lot better than overactivated pokes. And I'll show you with this slime and then I'll overactivate it and I'll show you, you know, the same pokes just so you know what I'm talking about. Underactivated slimes usually look glossier and just, they just sound better. So usually when people um, show off slimes like this, they'll usually just activate their hands and then play with the underactivated slime. And now that it's overactivated, you will see some um, like activation strings because I'm trying not to puff it up so you guys can still see kind of the same thing. Even though this is a thick slime, you'll see that underactivating it, in a, at least my opinion, sounds better and looks better than a overactivated thick slime. Now with overactivated slimes, I have this pigmented clear slime and I like to overactivate these because it also helps with like that sticky problem that you can get on your hands with clear slimes, but it also just makes them look a lot better, kind of like the opposite effect of white glue slimes and makes them more holdable and just overall just makes them more appealing. Now with this technique, you've probably seen it before, a lot of slimers will slowly stretch their slime instead of quickly stretching it. Usually that's because it is overactivated and they're trying to show off that slime and show that it is holdable and it won't leave any residue on you and things like that so that you're more inclined to buy it. Once you have all your filming done and you have a good setup and everything like that, then you're going to want to find good tags. And especially on Instagram and YouTube, good tags is what's going to have people find you. So, um, of course, I have like the same 20 tags, I think, on Instagram that I use, but then I'll add about 5 to 10 at the end. That way I don't get shadow banned. I've been shadow banned on Instagram before. It's not fun because only your, um, basically the people that follow you are going to see it. Um, but that same thing doesn't happen on YouTube, but on Instagram, a lot of people are considered bots if you use the same tags over and over again, but having, you know, the generic ones like hashtag slime, hashtag slimes, um, hashtag poking, things like that, especially if it's true in a video, they usually won't, um, shadow ban you, but just from my experience, I got shadow banned and I'm not even sure why, but, um, having a, having good hashtags is also a good thing. And then on YouTube, they just recently updated it so it's a lot easier to add what they call tags, but you just, you don't have to put hashtag. You just put, you know, slime, slimes, you know, if I'm reviewing somebody, I'll put their name, I'll put their slime shop name, I'll put their slime shop name followed by review and things like that. Things that you know people are going to search as, and that's just how people find you. And then number 10, I can't stress enough, 
is just practice. You know, you're not going to be perfect when you first start out. When I first started, my quality was terrible. I was holding my phone and just doing, you know, one hand. So I was all shaky and I didn't have a good lighting, um, just things like that. So you just really have to practice and kind of get your feel for the slime. Um, and especially when I started it here on YouTube, I was all monotone. If you go watch my Slime Obsidian review, I was like, like super monotone and now I'm like just out there um because I want to be more down to earth for you guys and I know that hearing somebody just drone on like this is not fun so um I just tried to add more personality and like the voice you hear is the voice that I talk like so I just want you guys to know me um but yeah those are definitely the top 10 tips that I would give anybody if you guys want to get more tips from me or any other type of tips, just whatever you guys want, let me know. And with that, I am signing off. So I will see you guys in the next video.